Hello. Essox Diaries and Pike Fishing. Over the last few weeks, you know that way you can uh, making a YouTube channel is one thing, but when you look at online, that's your in the mod the modern age, you go online to find your information, to find your answers to your questions. No. Straight off the bat, see if you're a professional pike angler, see if you're the best pike angler in the world, we ain't gonna be able to help you. Alright? There's other channels for you. Go put a kettle on or something. It's more than you angler wanting to progress into pike fishing. Something stuck me the other week. It's how negative online is and how people just attack people. Whatever happened to be nice and whatever happened to offering a bit of information or a bit of equipment or a bit of help, a bit of knowledge, a bit of this, being a bit more positive. One thing that struck me is how negative the pike fraternity is. It's to me it's ridiculous. Uh, no, I'm no <laughs> tell tell you right now, right? I ain't an accomplished pike angler. I've got 120 in my time, had various upper doubles, and I'm still learning. I learn a lot from 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 Alex's knowledge, and I'm sure he'll say the same. He's no a seasoned pike angler, but he can hold his own. I've learned a lot from Alex. So basically, see before, see see if you're in this video to try and figure out. Where do I start with pike fishing? For me personally, my advice to you is learn how to handle your pike. Before you think about catching it, what are you going to do when you catch it, if you're lucky enough to catch it? And if you're lucky enough to catch a big pike, do you know how to handle it? Do you know how to deal with it? One of the things that I learned in the last couple of years is, when you've played a fish, see when it's in the net, let it rest in the net. Right? Get your stuff sorted. But better still, have all your gear sorted before you start fishing. Now we've picked this unhooking mat, we take that everywhere with us, whether it's a roach, a perch, a bream, a pike. No, if we're stationary for most of the day, this is our unhooking mat. Unhooking tools. Now see if we're lucky enough to catch a pike today. We'll try and show you how to safely handle it. So, unhooking tools. You're always needing forceps. Now yes, these are the tap brands, these are the Expensive, do you know what I mean? I think they're about nine pound off Amazon, but they do the job. They're long nosed, they're curved, they're straight. They get into the, the pike's mouth. Scissors, if you need to cut the line. But I think more importantly, this is something that I neglected. Hook cutters. Now I've had to have a hook cut out my finger by Alex a couple of times. <laughs> um, bit clumsy. <laughs> but more importantly. See if a fish is hooked awkwardly and you can't get the hook out and you're spending you know, minutes become five minutes becomes ten. Cut the hook out. Cost a couple of pounds to replace the hook in your trace. I've got a wee pack of hooks spare if I need to do so. We've had to do it a couple of times. An awkwardly hooked pike. Just cut the hook, boom, you're away. Fish is away. Everyone's a winner. But again, braid cutters as well. These are um, crimps as well. We set of pliers. But this for me is probably the most important part. Pike care, fish care. I mean, there's probably about 20 quid's worth there. I thought it's so worth the investment if you're serious about your pike fishing. Now that's before you've caught a pike. Try and learn what you need to be able to look after the fish. Rather than putting a picture on Facebook and then getting absolutely slated and hounded for no doing this, no doing that. Let's try and help each other out. That's, that's, that's just my top and stuff anyway. So hopefully we can get a pike and then we can maybe show how we go about handling it. So Gordon's just spoke about the importance of being prepared when it comes to handling and unhooking pike. Now I want to be clear, we are not preaching, 
Like we don't want to be doing it, but it is so important. It is vitally important. Pike fishing is massive. It's massive in Scotland. Loads of people getting into it. Loads of new people getting into it. Uh, and as big and fearsome as pike look, they're actually really quite delicate. So yeah, unhooking, really important. Bite detection, if not more important than, than equally. Uh, and yeah, just spend a wee bit of time getting that set up right. Doesn't have to be expensive. You'll get, you've got bite alarms. I've got a bite alarm on my front bank stick here. You'll get delcoms that are like 200 pounds. Absolutely no need for it. I think that costs about 30. Uh, so a Fox Micron, I think. Uh, it does the job, but yeah, by indication on the front in terms of a, or in the form of a, a bite indicator, or a bite alarm, but just as important as having this, or some form of bite indication on your back, bank stick as well. This is a drop off indicator, the line just clips in underneath the reel here, fish pulls that, it swings off, it drops off, and the alarm screams off. If a fish picks up your bait and moves away, the alarm will, will sound, even without this. That if that pike picks up your bait and it moves towards you, that's where the importance of this really comes into its own. Pike picks the bait up, comes towards you. We need this weight to drop. It's not actually dropping too much there. <laughs> and that will then <laughs> it did, it still moved. <laughs> it then it, it sounds it sounds alarm with the weight of that dropping. So yeah, bite indication back and front doesn't have to be expensive. These are pretty cheap as well. I say that about 12 quid uh, but just just yeah just do it do it in whatever way suits you but de definitely back in front in terms of the gear if you're dead baiting on big See, before you go into that one thing that i learned you and i was saying earlier i learned a couple of things for yourself bait runner bail arm open you know i used to fish with a bay, uh, bait runner yeah but you changed my ways i that... i prefer fishing with an open bail just because there's less resistance. Uh, yeah, you can have that bait runner set really light. There's still a little bit of resistance there. Uh, if you're not using a back indicator, a back drop off indicator, then you need the bait runner. Otherwise it's impossible to keep a tight line. With the back drop off indicator, you don't need the bait runner because that clip is holding the line tight, it's holding it in place. Fish pulls out the clip and it's just, there's, there's no resistance whatsoever. The leads are free running as well, so there's no resistance on the lead. That's really important when it comes to the safety of the rig. If you were unfortunate enough to break off, you don't want that lead attached to the rig in any way. You want that just to come off. So yeah, just these wee things that, that yeah, people get hard times for. And we don't like seeing it. And there is absolutely no need for it. But yeah, just take the time to get it set up. In terms of the gear, if you're fishing big locks like we do, you need pretty substantial gear. I've had these rods for about 20 years. I think it's Nash Specialist Bait Casters. 12 foot, three and a half pound test curve. Now, you don't really need to go as heavy as three and a half. I like them. If you're chucking big baits, a whole mackerel, that'll handle it, no bother. Quite a large reel, but line, whether it be mono or whether it be braid, that's really what it does pay to spend a wee bit of extra money. Quality mono, minimum of 20 pounds, I would say. 60 pound braid. Spend the money, it lasts longer and there's less chance of it fraying or breaking and things like that. But yeah, enjoy your pike fishing. Be positive all the time. If you get questions, ask, and hopefully someone will answer you.
round. That out. I think we need the net for that one, do we? Mm, no. <laughs> you reckon? 15? 15 ounces. 15 ounces. <laughs> the good thing is they can only get bigger. <laughs> So we've touched on being prepared, preparedness, being prepared with the right under controls in the mat, being prepared when it comes to bite detection. But when you hook a fish, if you're lucky enough to do so, not that we know what that's like today, you need to, you need to be prepared to, to land it safely, safely for you and for the fish. Uh, we've not really needed it today, but we are still hopefully optimistic. And I think the size of an angler's Landing net reflects their optimism. And with pike fishing, you need a big one. It has to be big. Not necessarily because the fish, or all the fish you're going to be catching are going to be huge. But you want to be able to rest your fish in the net as well. Yeah, use it to land it, but use it to rest it in the water as well. These sort of, I think it's a Savage Gear net, 42 inches I think it is. And it's, most of the nets nowadays are made of this sort of rubber, knotless material. It's far safer for the fish, far easier on the, the sort of protective slime that covers the fish. Uh, so yeah, kind of safety net almost, it's like a second, a safety style net, big net. And yeah, have it with you all the time because you just never know. You don't always need to use it. And there are certain situations where it's probably safer for the fish not to use it. Uh, and we've seen Gordon's Goliath fish earlier on there. Two trebles were shown, we seen the trebles, we knew where they were. If you put that tiny little fish in a net, it would wrap up and the trebles would get caught in the net and you'd do some damage to the fish. If you can see the trebles and you're happy enough to just grab the fish, especially a wee tiny fish that size, grab it at the back of the head. If it's slightly bigger, you can just catch it underneath the chin uh, and just lift it. Either lift it out of the water, lift it onto your mat. Don't, don't allow the chance to get caught up in, in a net. So you have your net with you. Don't always need to use it. If you need to, it's there. I was just watching Alex cast his rod out there and I was just wondering whether he's landed near my bait but because my drop off my alarm went I don't think he has but this happened this morning it's one beating the alarm there wasn't there at all that's a pretty grim to be definitely honest just a one wee jack I'm going to check this anyway maybe I need check And there. Uh, a good run to. Well, that's three runs in about half an hour.
That's literally bit your bait in half. I see that. That was a whole mackerel, wasn't it? Yeah. Small fish, I reckon. Unlucky Alex. Yeah, it's a run. Hi, so pike fishing. <laughs> Forgot how much I loved it. See, they're absolutely brilliant, and it's just crap, isn't it? It's a whole crazy. winter, a whole winter of this ahead. Well, that, this was my third session. I've been out twice with Ross previously, the past couple of weeks, and blanked. So it was good to actually see a couple of wee, even if the other jacks were on the end of my rod. Ross got a couple of jacks, a couple of weeks ago, and a few runs, but it's been grim. When I grim start. <laughs> Reminiscent of last year, isn't it? A lot of jacks last year as well, and then finally found some bigger fish, so we'll get there. We will get there. And that's the good thing about fishing. There is always next time. And for us, next time is literally in two days' time. Back on the Lake of Menteith. The Lake of Menteith. Dead becoming base. a becoming a, I a there quite, We've been on there quite frequently. <laughs> it's nice. So fingers crossed for that. In all fairness, it couldn't really go much worse than today I could well <laughs> saying that but aye we're going to continue this little video over there somewhere hello Jack hey. well, as you can see we're just packing up to go home <laughs> Well, I'll get this thing if you get the <laughs> <Yeah>, sneaks on. <laughs> I'll swap you. There we go. That's what we go dead baiting for. <laughs> Look at that, it's pathetic. <laughs> uh, fish is fish, I suppose. 3 0 to Gordon. Cool wee fish. All on this rod, too. Aye. And all on sardines. Sardine was a half the size of it. Some run that gave you. Right, bring on the lake.
looks like trout to me. Oh no. That's not trout. <laughs> Second cast, second one. What happened to the first one? one. <laughs> the first one I felt I could see that. Just holding there, He's got good fish, man. I'm all that good fish. Oh, yes, it's a nice one. Oh, massive. It's a nice one. Nice fish. Nice fish. What do you mean, Eddie? I am. Beautiful. Leave him there for a bit. Once he settles down, or she settles down. I think it's a high, high double. Mid to high double. That's quite chaos, that net, anyway. So from three jacks on the bank, as you can see we're now, now on the boat, a couple of days later, on the pass, dead bait session on the Lake of Monteith. Uh, first cast, I hooked into it, felt like a decent fish. Hooked it, I let go of the bait, straight back out. Look what's in the sling. Don't think it's a 20, but it's definitely my biggest fish of the winter campaign so far. So, we spoke about fish care uh, at the start of the video. So once the fish was hooked, it made a bit of a mess in the net, so we got the fish free into the recovery. That's easy for me to see, I'm all excited. <laughs> it's in the recovery sling, um, whilst we dealt with the hooks, got the hooks safe. All the mat was already, tools were already out, everything was all good to go. So I'm going to bring the fish in, um, get a wee 40. Uh, hands up. There we go. There she is. 16 pound with the sling. So right in maybe about 14. We'll confirm it once we wear the sling when we get her back. Come there and get some photos. But I'm absolutely delighted with that. My biggest bike of the winter so far as I say. Turn the tail towards me to touch. That's the one. Good. All right. Get her back. Get her back. Fish is back in the net. She's looking pretty lively. So let's see if I can get her back. Gained myself a mischief. I'm better. Been this the last time I put my horn in its mouth. We'll be in a minute.
still be coming towards you. Watch the, watch the anchor up, watch the anchor up. <laughs> Don't give me problems. Dunyan the mud. Dunyan the mud. The lock seems to be on my side today. My sixth run, fifth run, second fish. I took a big sardine, just scraped a double, ten and a half. Oh, it's got a forty, please. Go off my cat doubles. Happy with that. Baiting sessions on all human teeth. There is one strict rule, which is no freshwater bait whatsoever. One thing that I bought this year, which we, I think we really needed, is a decent dead bait by storing your baits. There's nothing worse if you don't have a decent day, or like us, you kind of like shit day more than not. When your baits defrost throughout the day, you don't see baits like, especially the macro sardines become. So I'll put this wee one, this one for Fox Age. Got it, Matt. The first time we used it the other day was really good, Matt. Mm -hmm. Baits from him still solid. So today, herrings produced a run. Sardines produced a run. And mackerel, as it's caught fish. So that's the three different baits I've got there. Plenty of them. Always hope for that. A busy day on your teeth. But another bit of kit that we found pretty valuable is a wee dead bait storage bag. Not sponsored by me all that, just happened to be the one that I got. It's, it's a decent bag. That's my top and stuff anyway. Right, I listened to the run, missed it. I had what six runs, seven runs all in. And it's just gone five to eleven. So it's like good morning. Apart from me breaking the tip of my rod, well, the ring popped it. I don't know whether I played that fish or don't know, but I'm now using my spinning rod as a backup rod. So I've still got my two rods out. But so far, so good. Maybe that means teeth 20 for me is not, not too far away. I like to say that to talk well, but I can do it like that. This doesn't feel too big at all. <gasps> Take that back. Get a good one. Take that back. <laughs> <laughs> 
that's good. You know, two by the boat. I mean, they are not paying for but tea. Not a nice one. <laughs> <laughs> I flew it over there. That better be 20. It's nowhere near 20. Get yeah, away. <laughs> That's a look. Remember what we were saying? The record now. Mm. Remember what we were saying about chin and a pike? Get your fingers, slide it up the gill plate along the jawline and grip supporting the fish as you lift it this one, another 14 I was getting a couple of photos Alex is a designated photographer for today not enjoying it one bit <laughs> that again Please, please. Yep. Yep. Very detail in the gill plate. You said that on a bay, didn't you? Stunning looking fish, really, the condition of that. Lovely. Hey, but it's not hanging about. Alex just repositioned that bait and he's finally getting around by the looks of it. I reckon that's a trout playing about with it. It's weird. And it's weirdly moving about. I hope it's a pike, mate. Aye, so do I. <laughs> Aye, that's definitely something playing, that's, that's troutness. Pike. 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 See if it's a 20 you're looking thrown in. I don't think it's a 20 but it's a pike. <laughs> Thank God. <laughs> His company was getting unbearable there. That's what the 26 done, wasn't it? 
baby. <laughs> Are you wanting the forceps or the net? That's sardine again. Go on, see it. Yes! <laughs> Flags off. Flags off. <laughs> right, no need to get that in the net, no need to get it tangled up. Unhook the water and away it goes. Get a bigger one though. It's a start, it's a start. You've already had a big one for you. <laughs> My tongue. That was a trout. You hope? I hope. Hey. It's the first one in a bit. First one in a long time, eh? But I know. <laughs> Back into the dead bait bag. We're just talking how quiet it's been. Finally, Alex is in here. Cool. See if you got a 20 before me. <laughs> that totally is You get my other one. Right. Oh. I sat here most of the day just watching as a spectator. I just didn't think it was going to happen. Then one rod went. Halfway in the other world, <laughs> absolute carnage. Nothing big. A brace of jacks. <laughs> That's three jacks for me. But hey, been a tough old day for me. Here we go. <laughs> Peas in a pod. <laughs> Literally the same size. <laughs> I thought one slightly bigger, but lovely looking little fish. What a wait. Bad to <laughs> There you go. That's how you do it. Do it at a time. <laughs> it's Alex, he's turned out. That's his third run in as many bloody minutes. Jack for me, I think. Ah, you keep the jacks right, Mabby. <laughs> That's a great idea. In fact, I don't know, actually. Oh, shit, I'm falling off the seat. You want to play us? Yeah, I'll try and do it in the water, I think. Let's see what it looks like.
Ma shall have this to do. Think? Oh, go die. Got a live list of the day. Oh, was I call my tension? You're running 4 3. It's not about numbers though. This is a search for a Leviathan. A Leviathan? A Leviathan. That was far from a Leviathan. <laughs> but hey, at least I'm catching fish. That's true. Look at that view, but. Well, Alex just put it perfectly there. It's kind of fizzled it. I've not had a run since Alex had that double double hook up with the two jacks. This video's all been about at the the start where we were on the bank and it was purely to help out maybe newcomers to pike fishing. If unsure of no the tools required. So fish care is always is always kind of paramount. Fishing from the bank is totally different from fishing from a boat for obvious reasons. But what is good about fishing for a boat is it fights totally different. <laughs> See when that fish was running and, and it's just <laughs> a, absolutely all of it. Pike fishing can be so frustrating, but it can be so rewarding at the same time. Now, I've mentioned in the past, I've only ever had the 120. I'm more lucky when it comes to big double figure fish. I think the early we were counting up, Alex has said about, about a dozen 20 figure, uh, 20 pound fish. He was lucky enough to get the Leviathan that this Essox diary is all about in the last season. So it's my turn. Today's fish were lovely. Nice conditioned fish, 2 at 14. And I just hope that this winter can throw up a big fish for myself. Our next trip is on the river. And it's chasing another, almost like seems like an impossible task. And that's that 3 pound grayling. So if you fancy a bit of grayling fishing, we'll see you in the next video. If not, we'll see you, maybe see you in the bank at, for, the, for the old pike. But it looks like it's going to fizzle it, do you know what I mean? Oh, you bastard!